How many of you are uh, excited about Void 3.0? Like, how many of you main Void and uh, are excited about the changes versus how many of you don't main Void but are thinking about it? Twelve o'clock? Oh, you got a nice, nice little morning. I start work at eleven thirty. I don't know what your, I don't know what time zone you're in. I'm in Eastern with Cat, but your husband's away, so you stayed up late playing. Oh my gosh, dude! Yes, I, I have been. I wanted, I want to do morning streams consistently, but man, it's just I'm a night person. Always have been, and with the new job, it's been very easy to just, because you can't go to bed right after work, and I get off of work at eight, so it's like can't really go to bed right away. I want to just play video games and unwind. You're excited to mix up Devour with a Novavum? Yes, that could be fun. That could be fun. A closer look at Void 3.0 with the Witch Queen expansion for Destiny 2. Guardians will face unparalleled threats from exploring the seat of Savanthun's power, her mysterious and nefarious throne world, to facing the Lucent Brood. Hive enemies capable of wielding the light. Players will be tested in ways they've never been challenged before. It's a good thing then that Guardians come prepared. In addition to a new power cap and a host of new weapons and armor to use in the fight against the enemies of humanity, Guardians will also be imbued with brand new capabilities thanks to some significant changes coming to the Void Elemental Power coinciding with the Witch Queen expansion. The Void update, what we call Void 3.0, not point three, three 3.0, is the first overhaul of Destiny 2's elemental powers to come in year 5. Look for arc and solar changes in the future. So yeah, we've had these trees, um, the top and bottom trees for each guardian we've had since the release of Destiny 2 in 2017. And then the middle trees came with Forsaken uh, in 2018. You're in Arizona right now, so you're in Pacific time. Okay, yeah, we have glitches, glitches in Arizona. One of the people I play with all the time. Void abilities haven't really been developed since 2017, and they were a reaction to the sandbox that was in Destiny 1, said Destiny designer Kevin Yanes. With Void 3.0 and the other elemental changes to come, the team had a set of goals they wanted to attain to bring these classic elemental powers in line with the challenge level and balance of today's sandbox, as well as to strengthen the overall fantasy that is at the heart of each element's playstyle. We're trying to codify each of the damage types so that each element has its own world of gameplay that is dominant over, Yane said. Th that's dominant over what? <laughs> okay, for example, stasis is the domain of crowd control. Got it. We looked at what Void was about both thematically and mechanically. For me, Void is about major DPS and, like, I, I guess you could say I snipe enemies with those Axiom Bolt grenades. Like, it's it's still one of my, my favorite trees for endgame content and, and just noodling around in the, in the, uh, the wild. So, Void is about gravity, it's about space, it's about the cosmic. Okay, so that that's that's a vision, that's not like, oh hey, this is the utility of it. Whereas Stasis, they gave us utility, so they're not really, yeah. Okay, that means we want things to feel like you're shooting black holes that drag people in. There's a lot of personality we can draw from that that creates cool mechanics. I love Void. The first big Void 3.0 change is the introduction of Aspects and Fragments. First introduced with Stasis and Beyond Light, Aspects and Fragments give players more options to choose from when it comes to the abilities they want to use in battle. As with Stasis, Aspects are class-specific selectable items that give players additional actions they can perform within their elemental subclass. Fragments are non-class-specific complementary perks the players can select to enhance how they play the game. How players choose to combine their aspects and fragments is a key component of build crafting their guardian. 
When developing the new aspects for Void 3.0, the team worked hard to center them around new actions. Verbs, as the team refers to them. That's so stupid. Like, verbs are actions. <sighs> Man. Okay, anyway. That define what void should mean going forward for players. It's like they're throwing around the word verb like it's some cool, like, concept. And it's like, dude, you learn it in, like, I don't know, second grade language. Verb. It's so cool. We're going to be throwing around verbs. Or how about you just have cool actions? <laughs> anyway. I've been a writer my whole life, so that just drives me crazy. It wasn't just like a passive or a perk. It should feel like a new thing that you were adding to your toolkit, Yane says. All of the actions feel like they have new performances to them. They are reinforcing that core fantasy. These verbs manifest themselves in the forms of new actions for players to use in the heat of battle. New actions such as the trapper's ambush will find the hunter diving and slamming into the ground, Weakening enemies and causing nearby allies to become temporarily invisible. Glitch calls this the Void Shatter Dive. I personally will never use this because it's very awkward for me to... I, I hate the having to run and get speed and then jump and I just... No. Nope. I'd rather just punch something or throw a shuriken. Um... Diving, swimming in the ground, weakening enemies and causing nearby allies to become temporarily invisible. Okay. So, I mean, a hunter who's actually good at that will be useful, maybe. Titans will be able to grant... I don't want to commit to something that may not be true. I mean, we're talking about the utility of the hunter. Eh, I mean, I'll believe it when I see it, right? No one ever cries over not having a hunter in a raid. Titans will be able to grant barriers to allies, and warlocks will be able to summon entities from beyond the void to help turn the tide of battle. More on these new actions below oh good oh this is a long one too wow i didn't realize that now i'm looking at the scroll bar on the right and it's like whoa none of that was available before witch queen said yanes the old void subclass diamond system was rooted around a melee augment a super augment and then two passives what we've done is essentially added two new sections yes you still get your melee yes you still get your super but now you get two new things that either plus up your existing kit or give you something you didn't have before. I'm fine with this. We've taken elements and abilities from the diamonds and promoted them to full-size aspects, said Destiny designer Samuel Dunn. The Warlock's Chaos Accelerant ability is a good example where the Warlock can charge their Void grenades into more powerful versions and throw them. I use that every day that I'm on Void. Like... That is the key. Those are those Axiom Bolt grenades that people have been complaining about in Crucible lately. And guys, put your freaking resilience up to 70. You won't die to them. I mean, hey, you want to tell me resilience isn't useful? Well, that's why you're dying to Axiom Bolt grenades. So, enough said. <laughs> I'm still going to keep using it and killing people. And that's, I'm, I actually call out, like, who has low resilience whenever I'm in Crucible. I'll be like, yeah, so this guy has low resilience. He just died to my grenade. Or if you get one shot by Thorn, it's because your resilience is low. Like, stop whining and, and actually take action with your armor set to protect yourself against those things. That's what the game is about. Ran over. I'm trying to find my place here. Okay, well, that's something that's existed before. We believe that the performance and the identity of that ability is strong and feels like a unique ability. Enough to stand on its own as an aspect. I'm cool with that. With the 3.0 upgrades, we're trying to take the cool parts of what already exists and then add in new stuff where we feel like there are holes to be filled. Before we take a deeper look at each class implementation of Void 3.0, let's align on some terminology. Some Void attacks apply one or more of six buffs or debuffs that confer a tactical advantage to the Guardian. You guys are quiet today. You're very, very quiet. Suppress. The target is taken out of any active ability when suppressed. I hate that. While suppressed, the target cannot activate any abilities or movement modes. Combatants are disoriented. Weaken. Okay, this is going to be useful for PvE. The target takes increased damage, has slowed movement, and is disoriented. Volatile. The target will explode in a void detonation upon taking additional damage. If the target dies before Volatile has taken enough damage to detonate, the detonation happens 
Anyway. Oh, really? Wait. Oh, additional damage. That's interesting. So I'm used to things exploding when they die to my grenades. So that... The target will explode. I wonder what if that's like an ability thing or... Hmm. Or if it's void-based. Invisibility. The player vanishes from sight and does not appear on radar. So now we're into the hunter part of it. Over a shield. The player gains a protective barrier that immediately stacks on top of their existing health and shields and intercepts incoming damage. Over shield reduces the damage taken from PvE combatants. Um, so wait a minute. Maybe the volatile is for hunters. These these have got to be broken up. Okay. Uh, devour. Maybe these are all warlocks. The player is immediately restored to full health upon activating devour from any source and is granted grenade energy. When the player gets any kill with devour active, they are restored to full health. Granted, grenade energy and their devour buff timer is extended. That's why people like devour for endgame content, because, like, you just consume your grenade. And um, so you just hold it down until it goes. And then every kill you get heals you. And it restores your grenade energy. So you get to, you basically reset the devour timer whenever you kill something. And it just, every kill heals you. And I keep meaning to do a devour build for, like, soloing, um... What are they called? Dungeons? But I honestly don't want to solo dungeons. I don't enjoy it. Now let's take a class-by-class class look at how Guardians will benefit from the Void 3.0 changes in Destiny 2. So I guess all of those apply to all the Guardians. Titan. Avoid enabled Titan in the stalwart shield of a fire team. Whether serving a Ward of Dawn protective bubbles to withstand furious enemy assault, or charging the battlefield, shield in hand... Mowing down opponents, one shield toss at a time. Previously, the two supers, Ward of Dawn and Sentinel Shield, were tied to one another from a control standpoint. So the Titans had to use similar input <clears throat> and sit through a chunk of the Sentinel Shield activation animation before the Ward bubble was created. So that's not a thing anymore? Like, you don't have to wait? Okay, let's check this out. <clears throat> it's thinking, guys. You have a silver? We're going, we're going. I should probably drink some coffee. Can, can we just... It's instant. Okay. All right. That's cool. Hmm. I hate how I have to... Hold on. Tabs aren't good when you're trying to, like, do the F11 thing. So that's Word of Dawn. The Void 3. Point, or with Void 3.0, the two functions are separated, which means that the Ward of Dawn is now nearly instantly activated. It, it, it's kind of like your oh crap button, like for real. In addition, the Ward of Dawn has been moved to the fastest super cooldown tier, making it much more available to the Titan in need. Oh, this is actually nice. This change means it's a much better reactionary defensive tool, so Dusty Designer Mike Humble. So as an example, if a hunter were to jump at you and cast Blade Barrage, the Titan can now pretty reliably activate Ward of Dawn before any of the enemy supers land and survive as a result. This might be because of what we're going to encounter in the campaign, because we're going up against our own supers. So, yeah, PvP is probably going to complain about this. Just as before, Sentinel Shield will allow Titans to traverse the battlefield bashing foes with their Void Shield, or tossing their shield as melee attacks, thrown shields will damage opponents and apply volatile if controlled demolition is equipped, while shield bath bash kills will grant a full overshield. Okay, that's cool. So shield bashing over shields. Um... Wait. 
Wait, what did he throw at it? I love that little poop. Wow, Titan is already more fun to play. What's all this? Oh, that's the Vidoc. Got it. Huh. Okay. That was the offensive bulwark. There are three Titan aspects to choose from with Void 3.0. Don't pee. What don't they complain about? Right? No, uh, this, we'll get a twab tonight, I'm sure. This is just Void 3.0. Uh, they released it yesterday, so it was like, okay, we'll do a reading today. Control demolition, hitting a target with a void ability or a volatile detonation will make them volatile, so they go poof. We like that. Bastion uh, casting barricade generates overshield for yourself and nearby allies. Those bunkering behind the shield will regenerate over shield over time and extend the over shield duration. Okay. That actually makes Titan shields worth it. I typically don't use Titan shields when I play Titan. Of course, I also only play bottom tree solar and I, I do peak shooting. So I use the landscape as my shield. Um, but this, there is a reason to use barricade here. I'll admit, though, when I did, I forgot what we were playing. I did something with Raining the other day. We were both on Titan, and I really, we were doing something difficult, and Raining and I were just really working together as Titans. I mean, you needed a shield for whatever we were doing, but, man, the overshield would have been nice. Stasis, it's been good, but I think it's time for my Warlock to re-embrace the Praxic Fire. I've been enjoying bottom tree solar, and then of course I've always been a bottom tree arc main and a top tree Nova Bomb main. So yeah, but man, bottom tree solar is really good right now. It's just fun if you like explosions and ad clearing, which I do. We're probably going to do um, an explosive build after Witch Queen. I mean, there's no point in me doing builds right now because they're going to expire, kind of expire. Uh, but if I'm going to do another build, I really want to try to max out what we can do with it. And uh, solar can be fun. Maybe. I don't know. I, I honestly don't know what to think. I really don't. And um, I don't know. I, I, I think it's going to be fun. I think they're making some improvements for sure. I'm really looking forward to the forges and seeing what weapons are coming back. Very much so. And finally, the offensive bulwark. While you have overshield or are inside the Ward of Dawn, grenades charge significantly faster and you have increased melee damage. You also gain an additional shield throw for your Sentinel Super Shield. Okay, I'm not a huge fan of Titan grenades right now, but man, if that transferred to other people, Warlocks could be ridiculous. I mean, they already are, but... All right, Hunter. It looks like we're saving the best for last. The Hunter prioritizes movement and stealth in the heat of battle. Whether it's enjoying a few moments of tactical recalibration in a tense encounter by briefly vanishing after dodging an attack or setting snares and traps to disorient and slow their opponents... A fight with a hunter is always a study in agility, surprise, and deadly precision. So we have the hunter void deadfall vanishing stuff. Let's not look at this yet. Let's, are they going to explain it? I guess we will just watch it. Hunter void deadfall vanishing stuff. Let's take a look. I'm 
going to turn down my browser because like all these videos are on max. I don't know why this isn't high def. Okay, that's bottom tree super. That's what I use. Huh. Okay. In addition to the Spectral Blade Super, the Shadow Shop variants that hunters are accustomed to, Deadfall and Mobius Quiver will still be found in the Void 3.0 updates, though there are some changes to be aware of. For example, Mobius Quiver will fire volleys of three arrows that will now track targets and make them volatile if they are tethered. In addition, with Deadfall, the Void anchors that are dropped after Shadow Shots will now pull enemies toward it when, impacts, when it impacts a surface or target. The hunt. Wait, let me reread that again. Void anchors that are dropped after shadow shots will now pull it. Mm. PVPers are gonna complain about that one too. The hunter stare bomb melee ability will now weaken opponents, and PVP players caught in a snare bomb will have their HUD removed, and an obscuring screen effect applied for a short period of time. I am going to bitch about that when it happens to me. I hate. I hate being suppressed. Okay. Uh, but to be fair, it is a super. Oh! That's cool! Let's watch that again, guys. There is a lot of invisibility going on here. Yeah, so with the current one, it's kind of like the third one, the bottom tree void where you just keep shooting tethers, but instead he shot two and each one has three anchors, um, which is kind of nice. And in PvP, it's it's really dirty because how you get out of a tether is you shoot the anchor, the void ball, and it gets rid of it. So there's, there's no getting rid of it here, honestly. Huh. So we just saw the Hunter's Mobius Quiver, Trapper's Ambush, and the Stylish stylish Executioner. That's a cool name. Hunters will have three aspects to, to select with Void 3.0. Trapper's Ambush. Players can activate Quick Fall to spend their melee charge and dive to the ground, creating a smoke cloud upon impact. Enemies caught in the cloud are weakened and allies become invisible. If I don't have to run first, like that would be fine. In addition, snare bombs upon attaching to surfaces or enemies cause nearby allies to become invisible. All right. Right, right. That's what it was. Vanishing step dodging makes the hunter invisible. So he had a lot of dodges. Why? That was a lot of dodges. Stylish executioner defeating a void debuff target, weakened, suppressed, or volatile. Uh, grants invisibility and true sight. While invisible and after stylish execution, your next melee attack weakens the enemy. Um, I like stylish executioner. I really do. That might be one that I'm going to rock for that tree. Okay. Now for the best one of all, by far, the warlock. <laughs> You're sure once you throw glaive gameplay into that with their whole stab shield shoot thing, that is going to be interesting. Yeah, the glaives, what's really... I'm kind of worried that glaives are going to uh, make all other heavies obsolete for the time being, especially in endgame content, because you can actually put up a shield with your glaive, move forward, and res your friends. So it's, it's interesting. I don't know what the downfall of that weapon is yet. Obviously, we haven't played with it. Wait, the glaive is an energy weapon? Oh, really? I just assumed it was heavy. 
Okay, all right, that's cool and stupid. You're kind of hoping it has stamina energy drain to its use. Um, I don't think the glaive does, but we do have that with abilities. So that is a thing. So the infinite mysteries of the universe are the playgrounds of warlocks. When they aren't nose deep in an ancient text. Why do they always have to pick on us for reading? I swear. I'm going to have some coffee. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Warlocks are floating across the battlefield. True. We call it floofing. Healing allies and creating havoc. <laughs> havoc. Okay, that's a reference to your trial. Creating havoc among their foes. Void 3.0 fine-tunes these powers and the Warlock's new aspects will, among other new abilities, summon a brand new type of support from the yawning void of space-time. The Nova Warp Super lets Warlocks quickly teleport from one spot to the next, and players can choose to let loose with a deadly void eruption. With the Vortex Super Enhancement, a player's Nova Bomb will now draw enemies into the singularity it creates, damaging them once inside. Casting a Nova Bomb with the Cataclysm Enhancement will cause it to travel across the battlefield and seek out enemies. I was wondering how they were going to implement this. So it sounds like Nova Warp is the base super. And then you put on the super enhancement. So Vortex will give you bottom tree void. What sucks is now now you can't just say, oh, I'm bottom tree void. A lot of us will probably still refer to it like that. But, yeah. Um, and then Cataclysm will give us top tree. Okay. Fascinating. Detonations will shatter into smaller seeker projectiles, and shooting the Nova Bomb will cause it to detonate early. That That's already the case. Uh, I do that in Mayhem, and it's... That's why I carry a hand cam and a cannon. I carry a kinetic hand cannon, so I spawn with it already equipped. I like running with hand cannons. I see someone, I chuck the Nova Bomb, and the reason why I want to shoot the Nova Bomb in Mayhem is because if someone else supers your bomb, it, they kill it. So you're better off shooting it first, because once you shoot it and it breaks into projectiles, nobody can do anything to it. It just it chases whoever is within range. It's It's really good. It's very dirty. Actually, I wonder when we're getting Mayhem again. If it's this week, I need to rock it out. Mayhem is really good for getting engrams. So if you want to farm seasonary or seasonal weapons, Mayhem all the way. And then just go buy whichever engram you want by focusing it. The Warlock's melee pocket singularity fires an unstable ball of void energy that detonates when it nears enemies, pushing them away from the blast and making them volatile. I'm still trying to... Still trying to... Uh, is that what I use now? Or is that... Oh, wait, that's that might be the little dude there. According to Destiny designer Mike Humboldt, he expects this melee will find particular use in the Crucible. We do a lot of PvP testing and knocking someone who is trying to shotgun rush you off the map with a pocket singularity is always a good time. See, they're terrorizing PvPers. Okay, that is... That is really cool. I, I'm i looking forward to playing around with void builds for a warlock. There is so much you can do with that. Man. Warlocks are amazing. That was the child of old gods. As with Titans and Hunters, Warlocks will have three aspects to wield in Void 3.0. Chaos Accelerant, which we use. Hold down the grenade button to overcharge your Vortex, Axiom Bolt, Scatter, and so any grenade. Ma uh, magnetic grenades overcharge into handheld supernova. Interesting, and that makes sense. I use Axiom Bolts because 
um, if you hold it down and charge it and then throw it, they'll break up and seek four people. I think it's changing to five, though. And uh, they're just amazing. They they help clear ads so fast, and you're getting four kills. So with Nezzy Sin, you get, like, super energy really fast. It's amazing. Also, uh, the perks that I have on my armor set, grenade kills give me super energy. So that's why I can get super so fast. That's why I don't really feel the supercharge changes because I because of the ability builds. Feed the void, defeat an enemy with a void ability to activate devour. Wait, what? <gasps> can we pick two of these? Because I've been wanting to, I've been wanting to use Devour with Chaos Accelerant forever. So Chaos Accelerant is a top tree. That's one of them that I main. That's top tree Nova Bomb ability. Devour is bottom tree. But the reason why they're not together is because with Devour, currently you have to hold the grenade and consume it. So you just boom, you've got Devour, shoot things and live. Um, with Chaos Accelerant on top tree, you consume that grenade. Well, you don't consume it. You hold it, charge it, throw it. Dude, this could be good. It's only insulting if you find reading insulting. <laughs> it's for people who are uh, challenged. Just so you can't walk an entire level using the glaive. Like, you say it makes everything else obsolete. What do you mean, just so you can't walk an entire level using the glaive? <laughs> Now, if it's energy, I was thinking it would make all other heavy weapons obsolete because people would choose the shield aspect of it. But if it's an energy weapon, no problem. And I like that. Because Cat, they probably did that for a reason. But I don't know. We'll see how the glaive works. Um, It could be a lot of fun. Child of the old gods, cast your rift to summon a void soul. <laughs> oh, that's, that's what they called it. They called it a Void Soul. When you damage an enemy with your weapon, your Void Soul will launch itself towards them and detonate nearby, attaching draining tendrils, which deal damage and weaken the target. When your Void Soul deals damage, it restores either melee and grenade energy, if running Healing Rift, or health, if running Empowering Rift, back to you. Defeating an enemy who is being drained grants Rift energy. Now, this is really a cool little feature, but honestly... Chaos Accelerate and Feed the Void all the way. Like, those those are it. I wonder how many they're going to let us pick. If we could have both of these... Oh, my gosh. Designer Samuel Dunn calls the Child of the Old Gods aspect a passion project for him. Something the team worked on for quite a while to get right. I'm a Warlock main at heart, and I really love summoning little friends like Ark Soul and Bleak Watcher to do my bidding. So I wanted to make sure that Void Soul felt like a black hole, but with a little personality to it. Okay. Okay, let's go. <laughs> that was funny. Let's let's see that again. <laughs> That looks like chaos accelerant. Yep, there we go. That That's my life as a void lock. Just grenade after grenade. To complement the class specific aspects, Void 3.0 will also introduce a number of new fragments, which offer new perks to build upon, as well as add bonuses or penalties to your guardian's intrinsic stats. Here's a look at a few of the new fragments to come Echo of Expulsion. So, this is the bottom row. Echo of Expulsion, Void Ability Kills, Cause Enemies to Explode. Intellect bonus. Oh. Huh. So Expulsion, uh, Void Ability Kills, Causing Enemies to Explode. That is a top tree Nova Bomb trait. So I will... I have no interest in changing what I use for Void Abilities. Because it's so strong. Uh, but I, I do want Devour. Echo of Provision, Damaging Enemies with Grenades, Grants Melee Energy. Strength penalty. I don't even care about a strength penalty for warlocks. Again, ability mods on your on your armor will counter that. Echo of domineering. So 
Yeah, there are actually armor mods that do that, and they're base armor mods, not charged with light. Echo of Domineering, after suppressing a target, gain greatly increased mobility for a short duration, and your equipped weapon is reloaded from reserves. Uh, you get a discipline bonus. I won't be using that. I have no need for that. I, I might I might try that, though, when I do. I'm going to actually sit down and do some weapon builds this year for people, because I know some people just want to stand, stand still and shoot things instead of doing, like, floofy ability things. Um... Also, there's a lot of exotics I don't use because I don't do gun builds. And I think that would probably be perfect. Echo of Undermining. Void Grenades Weaken Enemies. Discipline Penalty. So, um, oh my gosh. What is that? What is that Void Trait? Holy crap. What's it called? I might actually use that one. Um... Oppressive Darkness. It's like Oppressive Darkness. I wonder, like, how much it's going to debuff. And if they're adding stuff like this into the subclasses, what are they going to do with uh, artifacts? Another significant change for Void 3.0 is that all subclasses will have access to all Void grenade types in the game. Thank God. Oh my gosh. Because hunters suck. For example, as a hunter, you'll be able to run with suppressor or magnetic grenades instead of choosing between just void spike, void wall, or vortex. I, I hate hunter grenades. I do. So this is exciting for me. Uh, I think this is radically going to change how fun the hunter is for people who like ability builds. In addition, some grenades will see upgrades. For example, the lingering field created by vortex grenades will now suck enemies into it. Oh, nice. Okay. It's, it's like stasis. Players who have played Destiny before the Witch Queen expansion will have access to all Void 3.0 aspects and most fragments with the launch of the Witch Queen on February 22nd. Several fragments will be available after the fir world first raid completion. New Destiny 2 players will earn their aspects and fragments as part of the new light game experience. I might have to start a new character on my alt account to test that out. Across all these ability tweaks, new powers, and build crafting options, one theme is clear. The team behind Void 3.0 is focused on giving Guardians the chance to fulfill the fantasy of their chosen class by giving them ample opportunity to do what their class does best. As Dunn puts it, we've built out multiple ways for the player to access and key off their core verbs. <sighs> core actions. For example, Dunn said that Titan has several ways to earn and extend over shield in a fight. One, Use the Bastion aspect to create a barricade to grant overshield to you and your allies. Or two, the shield throw melee can grant overshield, as does the void shoulder heart charge. I really like that. I think survivability for the Titan is important. And now, mind you, Solar is not getting this change. I'll still be doing bottom tree Solar. But I think this will actually help me to learn to enjoy Void. Because I don't really enjoy Void Titan. I think it's just boring and survivability isn't quite as good as bottom tree solar with overshield the titan also gets increased grenade recharge and melee damage as a result of these new build craft options players can double and even triple dip into these actions bungee like overshield for titans or invisibility for hunters as dunn sums it up it means you can do the things that your class is supposed to do all the time Void 3.0 arrives to coincide with the launch of the Witch Queen on February 22nd, 2022. We don't have a lot of time, guys. That's 12 days. All right. There you go. Void 3.0. Thoughts? Questions? Comments? <laughs> that means I can get out of this webpage. Turn my volume back up. Turn on the game volume. <sighs> All right, guys. Jez, Jez Raya is going to be disappointed. I went live just to do the Void 3.0 reading. I am going to uh, log off and make breakfast and get ready for work. And then um, we'll probably stream tomorrow night. Bye. <laughs> uh, we'll definitely be going live this weekend. There is 
I, I'm not sure what time though. I think this weekend, because I'm going away next weekend, which sucks. Because the new Rainbow Six Siege season is starting next weekend. So I'll probably stream that live on Friday if it starts by Friday. And then when I come home Sunday, we'll do some Rainbow Six Siege. I'm going to try to. I'm going to start trying to grind out season pass stuff, like, immediately, so I don't have to grind it towards the end of the season. I've been, like, finishing up games like crazy these last couple weeks, and it's it's been kind of stressful. Um, this weekend, we'll probably... Oh, crap. I need to do Overwatch. I might do some Overwatch this morning. Um, I need to get my Overwatch skin. Maybe we'll do Overwatch Friday. And then... Uh, I'm gonna do some recording. I'm probably gonna do my Shadow Keep recording. And. Yeah. I need to do Shadow Keep. I need to do. I, I'm gonna do Forsaken again. Like I said, I'm probably gonna play that twice. I know Glitch still has to do it on two of her characters, so maybe we'll do a, a live. We'll do Forsaken live. I promise. I might do it on YouTube. Because I know people. Because it won't disappear on YouTube. Twitch, it goes away after 60 days. Uh, but I might do it on my on my uh, live channel on YouTube, not on my video channel. And uh, so join the Discord, turn on notifications. Yes, you can have them sent to your cell phone. Uh, and you'll know when I'm going live. And of course, I'll post up on Twitter. I just don't know the time because a lot of this is time intensive. And I have a lot of crap to get done before reset. All right, guys. Thank you for watching. Y'all have a great day. If you'd like to support this channel, liking and commenting on the videos tells YouTube to share these videos with others who may find them useful. If you'd like to provide monetary support to help keep this channel up and running, visit my Locals and Subscribestar communities.